Have you ever been hiking in the Alps? If so, you've probably seen houses like this standing around. These were the inspiration for my latest piece, this house that you can see right here. And today I'm gonna tell you how I created this. Now let's get right into the modeling. Of course I started with the default cube, which I scaled up and extruded the roof. Then I inset those bottom faces and extruded them out. At the front I added a second cube with a few loop cuts and from there I extruded the stairs out. Then I went back to the roof and I extruded those roof faces out and then selected these edges you can see here and extruded them along their normals. You can do that by pressing Alt E and then select extrude along normals. For the balcony I added a cube which I made really flat and just put in front of the house below the roof. The chimney was also just a cube which I extruded to make really long and put it on the side of the house. On all the edges of the house I put these wooden bars. Now we get to the windows and doors. For those I just added cubes the size of the doors and windows and then I just pressed Ctrl- on the numpad to cut them out. For the railing of the balcony I simply added a cylinder which I duplicated with the array modifier. And on top of it I just added a cube which I made really long. To make the stairs look a bit better, I added those stone slabs onto them, which I also beveled and moved a bit around with the proportional editing to make it look a bit better. For the door I added a plane and put it in the hole of the door, then subdivided it a bunch of times and inset a few of these faces and then extruded them to the back. And I did almost the exact same thing for the windows. If you've seen a house like this in real life, you know that they have those shutters on the windows and of course I wanted to add those too. So I made frames for the windows and then just put cubes which I made really flat onto them. Another thing almost all of these houses have is flowers. So I created the pots of them with cubes and I put them below the windows and onto the balcony and also some on the floor. Into those pots I added a sphere which I deformed with the proportional editing. We will later use these spheres to create particle systems on them and put flowers onto them. Now back to the roof I created some roof slates where I again used the array modifier to place them on the whole row and I thought it'll look good if I just placed some of them around the roof and let the texture do the rest but I later realized that it just looked really shitty so later I covered the whole roof with these slates. Now the house is done but I still wanted to add some details so I created this stack of firewood and a bench where hikers can sit down and two barrels. And the last step which I forgot to do earlier was put stones on the edges of the bottom part of the house. And that's it for modeling and now we get to unwrapping. The first thing we gotta do now is select all of our objects, duplicate them and apply all the modifiers. I recommend you to also create a new collection where you can move your new models. When all of the modifiers are applied we can hit Ctrl J to join them. Now we go into edit mode and make sure that we have the edge select mode selected. Then we go to select and select sharp edges. Now we can see that all of our sharp edges have been selected and we can hit Ctrl E and mark seam. These seams are crucial for the unwrapping process. Now we can hit A and U and unwrap. Now our model is unwrapped but there's still one thing we gotta do which is slightly increase the island margin. I've been having the problem that in Substance Painter when I baked the model that there were always some artifacts on the edges of the model and this totally fixed it for me. And now we can export the model as an FBX and get to the texturing. So simply drag and drop the model into Substance Painter and leave those settings as they are and just hit OK. Then on the bottom right we will hit the bake button. In this window we'll put the output size to 2048, increase the dilation width and also give it some anti-aliasing. And then just hit bake. Now our model is baked and we can start the texturing. I begin with the plank material. So we create a new folder and add a fill layer into it. Then we right click the folder and add a black mask. Now when we select this mode here on the left, we can select the faces that should have the plank material. When we got that we can add another fill layer. There I also add a black mask and add a fill. Here we can now drag and drop textures from the bottom to the left window here. I used the plank texture which I made for the ship video. To give it some depth I added height to it and made it negative so the planks would stick out a bit. Then we can just add layer after layer with grunge maps, dirt generators and all that stuff. But I already explained a lot of this stuff in my past videos which you can watch on my channel. We do almost the same thing as for the planks for the stone but I use the cells 2 texture to get the pattern of the stones. And we do these exact same steps for all the other objects of our house. And when we're finally happy we can export those textures and import them back into Blender. Now we get to the very last step of the process, which is adding the flowers and plants. So select the top faces of the deformed spheres which we made. With them selected we create a new vertex group. Then we add a particle system and I use the clover and flower from the stylized nature video. Just select those plants and now we got some flowers and plants coming out of the pots. And with that we are finished with creating our house. 
Thank you for watching till the end of this video. I wish you a great day.